Welcome to FacingMelsMusic.com podcast featuring some of the most heartwarming stories from musicians all around the world on FacingMelsMusic.com. Welcome, warm welcome to Face and Mel's Music. This is Mel Golding. And I have the wonderful Tony West from Blacklist Union, all the way out in LA, singer, songwriter, front man. Uh, welcome. It's great to have you here. How are you feeling? Thank you so much. I feel good. I feel great. pretty good. Good. And a, and a real congratulations on your single, which was released. When was it released? About a week ago, was it? Yeah, it's like in the baby stages. Um, the queen of everything off the um, upcoming uh, full-length record, uh, the letters from the psych ward. Yeah, right, and it's absolutely wonderful. And we're going to come to that because the queen of everything feels like, I mean, you it's now, and your songs, all the past stuff that you've done is very reflective of the moment in time, isn't it? And very strong lyrical content, very much about pouring your heart and soul into the music. And, you know, Tony, when I, when I look at your life and I've, I've looked at it not too in depth, but I have looked at it and I look at your journey and it is a journey. It just feels like it's been filled with lots of experiences of, of loss. There's been devastation, trauma, there's tragedy, death, and there's, um, drugs and alcohol, which I guess were coping mechanisms on the back of all of that. Would you say that's kind of accurate, an accurate kind of summary of your music I mean, career? Yeah, you know, uh, the yeah. first three records, especially, um, Back to Momo, um, that I wrote yes. with Todd Youth, who also fucking died in 2018, um, who played with Danzig and like, uh, right. he's freely all kinds of people. But um, that record was kind of, it was about getting back to the rock too, like, you know, and like, yeah. I mean, there was stuff that I was um, processing, like Evil Eye from that record is about my mother. Mm. Um, and then this record, Letters from the Psych Ward, um, it, it's all um, about healing. And I, I went to, um, you know, the Amazon jungle in Peru with the Shipibo Indians and did ayahuasca five times and yes. changed my life. So that got me on the path of plant medicine. Which is where you you are now. Yeah. Which is obviously where you are now. But yeah, I mean, looking at just all the song titles from before, because I mean, it's just good for for my audience to to get a summary and kind of a yeah. you know track record of where you're at. Um, <clears throat> looking at um, After the Morning. Yeah. You're quite proud of well, that one. I mean, After the Morning, you know, I was mm -hmm. with Bianca from Betty Blowtour. Yeah. She was my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And we went through some gnarly things that, couples go through where I wanted her to make a decision and she couldn't make that decision. So, uh, it broke us up and then, um, yeah, she died, you know, shortly after like a year later, um, I was still so in love with her though. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, it's after the morning, morning death, it's spelled M O U R N I N G not morning yeah. time. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's what, um, you know, began Blacklist Union was was writing about so much of that. And um, there was a song on that record actually called um, Dying to Live. Yes. I recorded um, December 15th, 2005 or six, like, no, 2005, um, on the four year anniversary for death. And, and uh, I, I had set up with the producer where I went to the grave first and then and prayed and then I, I beelined to the studio and did this song so um producer yeah. and who i who's produced all the records and you know um wrote this letters from the psych ward with me um so i do the pass of the song and our bass player and producer when i was done their jaws were hanging open i was like oh yeah. did i suck and they were like no dude you nailed that shit all the way through and it, i have goosebumps because that was one of the first times, and I've only done it a few times since. I mean, maybe two, but where I um, I nailed it all the way through. And for a singer, that's kind of a big deal in the studio. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it must have and come I, yeah, from a when place. I the playback, um, I cried. It was it was very it was very. I remember Chris, who was also my sponsor in AA. You know, oops, but uh, I yeah. mean. Everyone knows I'm an alcoholic and drug addict. There's no mm -hmm. anonymity with me. But um, 
Chris, who's my spot, was my sponsor and the producer of Blacklist Union. I remember he turned around, saw me crying, and he had to turn around really quick because he knew the story. I think he would have cried too. He didn't want to cry. So. So many emotional moments there. And yeah. um, like, like you said, I think you just said a few minutes ago about the process and it's all about processing, isn't it? You know, and you've, you've talked about after the morning and then going into dying to live, which which, uh, as far as I understand it, it's about the moment you found peace with with her. Well, I, I found that, that moment of peace and acceptance yeah. after when I listened to the playback. Ah, OK. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Really important that you mention it like that, right? Because it feels... Yeah, yeah. That, that's part of your process and it's really important. But I noticed, I mean, there's the other titles here and I know I know about the drugs and alcohol and, you know, it's obviously that was your coping mechanism. It was a coping mechanism, obviously, and we can come into that a little bit in a minute, but yeah. there's other titles here, Please Kill Me, which is, yeah. tell Just me a little bit self, about that. Self-loathing, you yeah. know, right. self-loathing. like that's a hard one you know um again like i was i grew up in an abusive home my parents and, and everything and um you know it's the plant medicines that have got me peace and like ready even the way i put my energy out you know it's like everything was always in 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 like i was like a wilted flower yeah but, um, yeah. you know, so please kill me with the, the self-loathing, you know, was very huge for me. And, mm. you know, I had to untrain myself too as a, as an adult, like not to mm. be so negative, don't be a gossip, all this kind of shit that I picked up as a kid where, you know, my family of origin, they did this kind of shit, you know, they were right. taught in alcoholism, okay. uh, severe abuse, you know, so. Okay. So it feels like you're, I mean, not obviously you're not going into that. This isn't a therapy session, you know, this is yeah, yeah. just to kind of get an, obviously an idea. Uh, we can go as deeply as, as you want to, but I'm aware of yeah. your, your safety and the way you feel, you know, that's really no. important. You know, like, um, what's that? Yeah. I think I said last time, you know, my life's yeah. an open book for the whole world to read. That's a quote from um, home sweet home, you know, Molly crew. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Because it is. And you know, yeah. the thing is, I, I hope that I can help somebody that's what i love about you and we're going to come on to some of your blogs and stuff that you've been writing you know because i'm interested in that as well but this this beginning the the start in life was tough for you at really a real young yeah. age yeah yeah when i was one years old i had just started walking and um i lived in the mm. bronx in new york city and when i was mm. one year old i fell in the street and a car was parallel parking and reversed over my legs and then pulled forward over my legs. Like this was at one. Yeah. So, and then supposedly three or four, I broke my hip. Nobody talks about how or whatever. Um, my goodness. At six, my father started showing me porn and asking what happened to my body when I saw that. And like, I didn't know like a man gets aroused or erect. Mm. Or I was like, I don't know, which made me think I'm mm. an addict something's wrong with me you know yeah so. all this confusion mm. yeah absolutely 
and then of course mum played a part in in your life too and it feels like that was uh although I don't know the ins and outs of that but it, it just feels that like you really and from one of your videos I think it was a video evil eye is it yeah, yeah. it's it's playing it out there Played me as a little yeah. boy, um, yeah. and and then my friend who who actually looks like my mom when she was right. young um, played my mom, and and I remember watching from the side, and it was like peering into time, like, and I cried again, you know, like, yes. I mean, these these are deep ass things, yes. like, you know, I'm not a, uh, yeah. you know, I, I'm not crying all the time, but like, I'm yeah. healing, and like, my soul, man, is. Yeah. Needs to be, fucking healed and i've done yes. so so much healing so yeah much. yeah you understood yeah absolutely you are and you're still there and music feels like it played a part of your healing because you you yeah. started as far as i understand you got a real interest at five years of age is that right five yeah i, I asked yeah. my uncle i asked my uncle who's that girl on that poster and he's like that's no girl that's david bowie and oh, okay. my life was never the same it was a ziggy stardust yeah. uh but I remember like fighting to stay up to watch, you know, music shows and seeing like, yeah, 
you know, uh, whoever I could, Bowie or Cheap Trick or, you know, um, yeah, any of that stuff. Was it the music you were into? Was it the music or was it was it something like you were looking up to them? Were there, what elements of, of that drew you I mean, to of that? Of course, music is healing yeah. and magical. Um, but I love the performance aspect. Um, I mm. love, you know, they're like kind of like prophets, you know, of music. Mm. And Bowie, I mean, fuck. Mm. You know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. performance and music, you know, that's I'm into the art of it, you know. You're one hell of a performer. I've seen you. Okay. Incredible. Incredible. You really do give it your all, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Why no. around, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah, no, it's absolutely fantastic. So uh, I noticed also, I mean, we are going to come sort of like to the present stuff, but I, I'm really, really intrigued. I just found your journey really fascinating and something that I want to share with people, you know, and um, how honest you are with yourself and in your music and you're promoting that and giving that out to the world. And there is no shame in that, you know, because lots of people do, you know, particularly if you're going down the drugs and alcohol um, route, you know, they do feel this and hence this self-loathing yeah. aspect obviously came into it. And it feels like you are on that road now for self-forgiveness. Um, one thing I'm looking at here is beauty in disguise about beautiful yeah. people who are ugly on the inside. So it feels like you've experienced people, many yeah. different types of people. I yeah. mean, that's where kind of, you know, Beauty in Disguise is like mm. almost like the next record, Breaking Bread with the Devil. Um, mm. that, that that saying is um, means inviting the wrong people into your life. Yes. So, you know, Beauty in Disguise, I mean, I live in L.A. There's plenty of those. Right. I mean, Tur Turbo Negro was saying about it, uh, City of Satan, it's called. They're one of their songs, um, I love them. They're one of my biggest influences. Right. To our Negro, um, yeah, but it's not pretty, and and it's, yeah. you know, yeah. like I just went through some severe mm. heartache and, and 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 the fucking divorce, and, and it's about the queen of everything. So you know, it's like, um, yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot there. There's a lot there, and then there's another one, mirror, mirror on the wall. Yeah, that's off back to Momo. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's, that song's about like, okay, you know, shit is, isn't going right in your life, like relationships, whatever. Mm. It's, time to, it's time to look in the mirror and be like, okay, what's wrong with me that this keeps showing up or that okay. I'm acting this way or, you know, whatever. She's yeah. acting this way, whatever. Yeah. Mm. Self-reflections. Yeah. Self-reflecting. Yeah. And that's hard to do, isn't it? It is, it is hard to do. It's not easy. I mean, look at all the guys, you know, like I, I always say, like, if you do not deal with your pain, it will kill you. I mean, there's Lane, there's Scott Weiler, and there's even Chris Cornell now. I mean, all these fucking people that we all love so much. And Andrew Wood, my biggest influence, Mother Love Bone. Like, um, mm. you know, if you do not confront your pain, it will kill you. It's really that simple. Mm. People, they rather mask it. You know, mm. you're rather get loaded than confront yourself. I mean, plant medicine's all about confronting yourself, you know. Mm. That's where you are now, isn't it? Yeah, I've been on this road for a few years, but like mm. after the ayahuasca, I, you know, I got really, really lost in love where um, it fucking destroyed me. But yeah, I'm back yeah. on the path, you know. Yeah, because am I right in um, reading somewhere you were you were also married before you were married once be once before is that right? She... I've been married a few times, yeah, but um, okay. This you know my first wife died from cancer, Tracy. That's right. Yeah. That's There's right, a song yeah. off Breaking Bread with the Devil called "Feel Me." Um, ah. I wrote about her where um, remember yeah. my friend was like, "Come downstairs, I want to meet you." I'm like, okay, and then um, I left this girl in my bed and then um i'm walking back up into my apartment and i hear this crying and i'm like that's tracy crying that was her name my first wife yeah. and i'm like that can't be tracy she's dead so so i get to the door of my apartment and the crying gets louder so i think this girl is inside my apartment crying right hmm. so i i open up the door like classic you know drop my keys rush to open the door fly it open 
fling it open, and she's sound asleep, and the crying stops. So then a week later, I'm in that apartment, and I hear the crying again. And I say, Tracy, what is it? I go, if they're telling you to go, go. I will meet you there, and and I know you forgive me, and I forgive you. And mm-hmm. I never heard the crying again. I have goosebumps again. Just and then, wow. and then sixty-five wow. steps away, which is on Breaking Bread with the Devil, is about yeah Tracy, my first wife, and Bianca from Betty Blowtorches. Um, their distance between each other, their graves at Hollywood Forever. Yeah. And then in the video, I'm walking away with my son because that's so symbolic. Uh, you know, it's right. so symbolic. For me. Someone told me it was pretty funny. They were like, 
you know, you're six, four, it's not 65 steps away for me. I was like, Oh, I never thought of that, but (laughs) yeah, it's, um, yeah, that's so, so, so deep. So just full of tragedy, you know, and this is, this is what I really feel. It's incredible. You know, when you look at your life's purpose or you think, you know, what, what's your life's lesson? here you know if you want to go on a real deep level and it almost feels like you were targeted from day one you know when you talk about being that little baby uh, on the floor with a car running over your legs you know all the way up loss and constantly challenged with love loss devastation but it's to this to the nth degree isn't it it's it's just all the way in terms of this traumatic feelings it's weird because mm. uh, are you familiar with dmt like 5meo dmt no mm. don't think so it's, it's a plant medicine dmt so um okay i uh i did a session in malibu and um i saw this was like a month ago and i saw like the pain is over for me yeah and that and i was and they were like spirit was like you know, this was the price I had to pay to make my dreams come true. And then I remember thinking, fuck, was it worth it? You know, because God mm. damn. But then I also think I, I must have had some bad karma and some past lives. I don't know what the fuck, but, you know, it's like. Are you a yeah. believer of that? Because I think I am, oh, yeah. actually, to be honest. I, I've, been shown, I've been shown <laughs> things in the various <laughs> medicines I've done. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Where I was lost for a couple. And, you know this Mm. marriage that I was in, like, Mm. I, um, you know, I went back, I was so distraught. I went back to like hard drugs and, and in March of 2020 and, and no October, 2020 and March, 2021, I overdosed smoking fentanyl and I was brought back by my friend. Okay. And you know, what, what just dawned on me recently was that, cause I loved her. I love car was her name is her name. And, she was my wife and I loved her and I tried so fucking hard to make it work, you know? Yeah. And um, we, when we did ayahuasca together, I saw that like, this wasn't our first rodeo together. Like she's been, we've been together in the past, you know? Uh. So what I've put together and I believe in my heart of hearts was that um, I died over her twice uh. in past lives. And, and I was shown that with these overdoses yeah. and, and this time it's not going to fucking kill me this time I'm going the distance. And some of that karma could be, maybe I committed suicide in a past life. And I've thought about this where, um, mm. I hurt a lot of people. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. These are theories. Yeah. I have. Yeah. No, I, I, I think you're right. Actually. I've, I've thought about that too. Cause yeah. it's, it's almost like looking at the suffering you go through, you must have done something to cause it maybe it's so it's kind of in the reverse in a way so you must maybe you right. cause suffering in a past life some something along these lines perhaps right. perhaps yeah. that makes sense that definitely would you say you're a spiritual person then tony yeah. it sounds like you are i mean yeah to the utmost yeah. degree oh i love that That's are great. you familiar with mother love bone at all i know no, yeah, so, mother love. Okay, I'm gonna check 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 them all so out. So mother love bone is the catalyst for Seattle, and then the singer huh? died, and like uh, they got Eddie Vedder and became Pearl Jam, who I'm not a fan of. Huh. Um, but mother love bone is um, the holy grail of rock and roll. Huh? Very very spiritual, and um, Andrew, the singer Andrew Wood, had a band with his brother Kevin called Malfunction huh. throughout the formative grunge years in Seattle. Mm -hmm. In his last couple of years of life, he had Mother Love Bone, but Malfunction is accredited with, like, um, being the godfathers of the Seattle scene. Like, I mean, all the locals in Seattle heads know. But I actually, he's my biggest influence. I learned everything I know to him. Amazing. Um, It's very, very spiritual, Andrew Wood. And I sang in Malfunction with his brother a couple Mm. of years ago, um, doing the songs I learned how to sing to, which was... Mm. And I got to do it in front of his mother. I remember we played in Seattle and all the camps were there, like you know, Soundgarden, Nirvana, all the camps. Yeah. And I remember Andy's mom was luminous. Her face was luminous in the crowd. And I, I remember I, I saw her and I had to turn away because I got choked up. Right. Um, but she had a face of astonishment because I was channeling, you know, yeah. I, before I 
went on stage, I said, please, God, don't let me make this about myself. Help me be a channel for his family, his friends, his mother, his fans, you know, right. and that's exactly what happened. So. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Mother love them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know I will be Googling away <laughs> yeah, yeah. this weekend. All this, uh, this wonderful. So it, it's, you know, getting back to, um, I guess, you know, I'm just thinking trust, you know, trust, trust yeah. must've been an issue in your life trust i mean this was a big issue even in my marriage i i don't think yeah. either one of us trusted each other and then we had no yeah. reason like for yeah. that it was just yeah. you know trauma and, and, yeah. and stuff and i still love her i i hope i believe in real love like i think that um you know if it's real love like it's going to come back regardless of a piece of paper regardless of circumstances whatever mm. married not married like yeah. she's the my fucking life there's no doubt and you know yeah yeah so. yeah did you say you were going through divorce now is that we right just, it just got final last week yeah okay how, how are you feeling about that are you okay i mean it's been very fucking hard um yeah like i have to let her go you know one thing okay. i realized in, in plant medicines too was when you let go of someone or something yeah. it comes back to you anyway but you, you mm. don't have any fucking control you know yeah. i have no control over anything me i i have control over mm. my behavior and sometimes i don't even have control over that <laughs> because i'm fucking okay. mechanical and like you mm. know acting out from past traumas or experiences and stuff yeah, yeah. do you feel the stage the stage is a good place to act out there your oh, yeah. truest truest feelings though yeah you know i consider myself i don't even consider myself a musician i i consider myself a performer mm -hmm. songwriter a lyricist like a melody maker like mm -hmm. a visionary like scott wyland used to talk about it, like he's not a muso he didn't play anything either and, yeah. and i'd rather have that role where melodies lyrics yeah. The art, the vision, the performance, like that's my mm -hmm. deal, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's your role then. That's your that's your purpose. That's where you're at. And you're definitely moving forward with all of this. Tell me a little bit about your because you have a website. You've got there's I can see a couple of websites here. There's one tonywestsinger.com. That's yours. Yeah, and that's just something a fan did. Um Okay. Yeah. I mean, and then we have of course blacklessunion.com, which is being yes. revamped. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, but you've written, um, I'm assuming you have written these blogs, your brain on rock and roll music. Yeah. Yeah. And you've also written tips for bringing your music to foreign markets. So, and what else have you got here? Uh, history, I can see Rolling Stone, a history of Rolling Stone magazine. Okay. So are you still blogging? I mean, do you have time to do this? And, and, and what are your intentions around that? I, I don't fuck. I don't have time to do anything. Uh, <laughs> okay. what's call it? Um, I have a fan. That's a fan ran thing. Okay. So I think maybe they take quotes from me, you know, from ah, okay. right. interviews and stuff. Yeah. I haven't right. looked at it in a long time. Yeah. You should look at it because someone's really listening. <laughs> someone's, right. It's great because it's, um, they're listening to what you're saying and, and they're putting it in a way where it's really um, portraying you in a, in such a lovely, a great light, you know, where you're being, you're in, you're an inspiration to people, but you're also passing on a real positive message. And it yeah. feels like your message for me, you correct me if I'm wrong, but it is, it's, you can, you have to survive. You can survive this and you've got through things. And that's what it feels. It feels like your entire life has been just a test, uh, a whole test of survival and surviving lo love, loss, tragedy, trauma, all of these things. And, and you're still here. And now you're in a new phase. Tell me about the new, the new single, the new album, because I know from our last conversation, I remember that this is kind of more the healing part where you're sitting now. Tell me more about the album now and, and how you're feeling about all of that. Well, um, like I said, uh, I wrote it after the ayahuasca journeys in Peru with the Indians and stuff. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, there's a couple tracks on there that are like, uh, you know, Dirty Halo is one of my favorite. Um, you know, that's in tribute to a lot of friends that I've lost, uh, including Todd Youth. Mm. You know, say, um, 
It says the youth's gone cold with a fatal blow. The second coming is a no go. That's a chorus line. And and the youth's gone cold with a fatal blow means he died. Todd Youth died. Mm -hmm. The second coming is a no go is about us writing a second record together. Right. Um, and there's so many good songs on there. Um, I, and I think too, like mm. songs like Dirty Halo, The Queen of Everything, oh, I love that. Um, Dancing with the Angels is another one. And then we also recorded Mia, which is an Aerosmith song. Um, but we've, I think we've really found a niche because um, mm. we kind of slowed things down with those and it's kind of dark and moody. Mother Love Bone, Alice in Chains-ish, mm. you know. Um, but it also it has the what I'm known for is the high octane, you know, in your face rock and roll, like GBH, you know, and influence like punk rock, rock, you know. It like really is. From Psych Ward, the, the title track letters from the Psych Ward. I mean, it fucking rocks hard. Yeah. Uh, and another song called Out on a Jones, which is about me almost dying, you know, twice. Um, right. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot of good songs on this record. And then I'm also putting two bonus tracks on there because um, D.H. Peligro from the Dead Kennedys, who was a good friend of mine, passed away. And we were in the studio recording and, and we did a cover of um, Gates of Steel by Devo and also um, Bowie Golden Years. So okay. that's being put that's being put on Letters from the Psych Ward as bonus tracks. Oh, so, wow. That's that's yeah. something to look forward to. Yeah. Amazing. And, Xander from the Circle Jerks plays bass on it. So. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's yeah. really, really good. So how many songs are actually on the on the album then? So there's ten originals. Yeah. And then there's the cover of Mia by Aerosmith. That's I did that for my daughter. Her name's Mia. She was named after the song. Oh, and of course the two bonus tracks. So there's gonna be thirteen songs. Okay. Yeah. Mm, thirteen. How'd you feel about that number? Oh, I love that number. <laughs> Good. 15 is bad. Like 15. I remember I told Bianca, you know, when she was putting out her record, yeah. I'm like, you can't have 15 songs on your record. <laughs> That's a death number. And then she had this song called I Wish You Die about her old like singer. And I was like, you can't put that out there in the world like that. You know, and she's like, ah, oh, 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 whatever. And, but then she died. So, yeah. Mm, there's some truth in all of that. Yeah. <laughs> there is some truth in all of that. This superstitious stuff, stuff going on here, and with numbers and that. So, you know, I don't, I don't know about mm. superstitious. I think it's mm. synchronicity. Yeah, I believe in that. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's synchronicity, and it's all around us if we pay attention. It's like mm. fucking crazy, you know. It is. Do you feel yeah. you're paying more attention to that now? Oh yeah, yeah. More than ever, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That means. Do you feel? Do you feel you've evolved then spiritually oh my God. that so i always say too like there is no yeah. change like you have to evolve there's no changing yes. anything like you, yeah. you have to evolve yeah. yeah yeah that's great that's great tell me about this because you've mentioned the medicine uh you mentioned something before this plant medicine and i know you're into a more unhealthy life with drugs and alcohol how many years were you into that that road how many years were you in that phase of the drugs, drugs and alcohol. alcohol? Yeah. I mean, years. Years, like 20 years, more. I mean, you know, I've been in and out of AA for a couple decades, but um, okay. it's, it's gotten, uh, you know, they always say progress, not perfection. Like I haven't okay. shot drugs since the late nineties. I haven't done crystal yeah. meth since the late nineties, but like, yeah. I've always struggled with, um, I like to fucking tie one on drinking, you know, but drinking yeah. is so hard on the body. And then when I drink, I want to smoke cigarettes. I can't be smoking cigarettes either. Uh, um, right. Yeah. And then weed was another one where uh, I can't be smoking any weed anymore either. It's, it's yeah. too strong. I, mm. I remember being sober once and um, smoking weed. It was funny. My friend, I said, uh, I can't believe I smoked weed. I hate this shit. Do you have any more? Like, that's <laughs> So, you know, I have this addictive mm. thing, um, yeah. but I, I think with the more spiritual journeys yes. feeling that I do, the deeper I go, that shit's not even an issue at this point. You know no. what I mean? No. Like, 
I've been doing psilocybin, uh, microdosing, you know, um, right. then I'm doing the DMT journeys. I did a MDMA session with my therapist. Um, mm-hmm. I did Ibogaine in, in a clinic in, in um, Mexico. And then, you know, the ayahuasca, all of this stuff. And it all, it's mm-hmm. crazy how it all runs parallel. Like you get the same messages from each different mm. uh, medicine, you know? Interesting. So, I mean, of course, people in AA, Hmm. everybody has opinions about shit. You know what I mean? But and this yeah. is my journey. This is my journey. Like, you know, it is. yeah. Yeah. And there should be, there should be no judgment there. You know, no one is perfect. Everyone's gone through something. Yeah. Everyone's gone through, but it feels like also, you know, I'm looking at some of your titles again, um, from previous, yeah. um, I think 2007 and eight, there's another one here, liars, cheaters, and thieves. Yeah, I love that song. Um, you know, that's uh, uh, yeah. what L.A. is filled with. And, you know, yeah. I, I remember going to meetings and being and hearing people say, I'm nothing but a liar, cheater, and thief. Like, well, I've played that role, too, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. I'm not proud to say, you know, but, um, yeah. Yeah. And and one thing about being human is, like, hmm. it's not always pretty being human. It's like, you know, nah. I got this fucking, you know, like a business that – you know, it's like we sell yeah. things on the phone. I, I don't want to be part of that mm. world. I, ever since I was a little boy, I wanted just to be an artist, make my living doing art, you know. And mm. that's finally coming to fruition. Um, but I think yeah. a lot of people have to resort to things that they don't want to fucking do to survive, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it sounds like, have you been in LA? No, you grew up. You didn't grow up in LA, did you? It was New York. Was it the Bronx? New York City, yeah. All right. And how long were you there for until before you moved to LA? So I was 19. Um, okay. Right. Okay. So do you feel, I mean, I don't know, what was the, the environment like over there in comparison also to LA? Because I'm just looking at your environment. I mean, New York City, I love New York City. It's it's changed yeah. so much, though. But right. when I was yeah. growing up, it was amazing, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, and then L.A., when I first moved here, too, it was amazing, too. And, yeah. um, you know, I can't do cold either, like New York with the cold. Okay. And shit. Yeah, and slipping yeah. the ice and all that shit. Like, yeah. um, but, you know, L.A. for the last few months has been severely cold and raining, and you know? Mm. Like, um, but has LA it really? Is- Point. yeah really huh. yeah, yeah okay i never think of it like that all right okay yeah interesting your life is is in la now i mean yeah you know my son oh. is going to be okay. you know, graduating high school next year so i yeah. really would like to move somewhere else um okay but like la is my home so it's a hard call yeah. I, I tried moving to vegas i didn't like that you know mm. Mm. You know, Florida's not for me. I mean, I, I might go check out Nashville again, you know, because mm. people seem to be moving there. Mm. Um, I was just in Austin, Texas. Like, it's very rural over there. Like, I don't know. Mm. Mm. I say I, I hate the city, but then I, I have to be in the city. It's just this weird thing, you know. So, but, you know, mm. I want to get the band happening and, like, my heart healed from this. Yeah. Yeah. Divorce relationship, and then you know, mm. figure it out. So. Mm. so, where are you now with your healing? I mean, it feels like you've you've made so much progress, and it feels like you've, you know, you've you've released the single, the, the album. Things are coming to a close. It feels like you know there well, are endings and beginnings. Yeah, yeah, we're just starting mm. with the record. So, um, yeah, the, the first single's been released. Uh, okay. The second one will be Letters from the Psych Ward. Right. Um, Okay. Okay. And are the other band members there as well with you in LA or are they, where are they? Um, yeah. Yeah, they are. Okay. That's cool. So, and I seem to remember also you're, am I right in that you're learning to play the piano? Uh, I'm always kind of learning to play the piano. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. I, I was doing my walk today and I was like, I need to buy a piano. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So learning is kind of important just to keep things going, to keep evolving. So evolving yeah. not just spiritually, but also in your craft as well. Yeah. I mean, I've played lots of piano when I was mm. training my ear, you know. Um, yeah. 
to sing and stuff, but like, mm -hmm. you know, you, you have to be, to be a really good singer, I believe, and, and deliver, like, you have to be spiritually sound, emotionally sound, like, you, you gotta have some sort of center, you know? Yes. Yes. Uh, that's what I think. I mean, there's plenty of people that have been severely fucked up that were great singers, but hmm. I think they were able to reel it in. Like, I remember, um, you know, I was roommates with Mike Starr from Alice in Chains. Um, okay. And, and he told me once, he's like, dude, we were playing in front of 50,000 people one time and Lane nodded off in the middle of singing, you know, and he said <laughs> no. he, went up to Lane, he went up to Lane, hit him in the shoulder with his the headstock of his bass and then like whispered in his ear, hey, dude, we're on stage in front of 50,000 people. And Lane was like, <laughs> I know. And then like just started singing right where he That's left off. That's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. That is so funny. That is hilarious. Am I right? Also, um, uh, Leon, Leon Lewis. Did you yeah. did you live with him at some point? Is that right? I mean, we we trudged the streets of Hollywood together. Yeah, <laughs> he did tell me a little bit yeah. about that, and he told me some funny story about when things were really hard, and yeah. um, what you did to get some food. Basically. Oh, the roaching <laughs> thing, yeah. Yes. We used, to, we used to call up restaurants and be like, we found a roach in the bag and we'd get free food like all the time. Like <laughs> I, I would not only need to eat, eat for myself, but like yeah. all of my friends needed to eat too. So I like fed the city for years doing that. Yeah. That's just too funny. Very naughty, but brilliant idea. I might remember that myself next time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, okay, yeah. No, it sounds it sounds like you're you're making real great progress, and it feels like you're it feels like you're more settled in yourself. I mean, I know things aren't exactly where they want to be, and this, but it feels like you're more settled. Do you feel more grounded? Yeah, I feel way more grounded. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, I've yeah. done an immense amount of, amount of healing. And there's still toxic people around, you know, like, uh, but like when I see red flags, mm. like I dated this girl for like a few weeks and like there were so many red flags. I was like, yeah, yeah. no, that's not going to work, you know. Plus, I mm. still love my wife, my ex-wife. I still right. love her. Like, nobody's going to come along and do yeah. make me feel how she made me feel. Um, yeah. So... That's difficult. I'm very sorry. That it, uh, yeah. uh, I've been through divorce myself only once and that's it really. But yes, yeah, yeah. so I, I understand the, the difficulties, even if it is the right thing to do, there's still a lot of heartache in that, isn't there? I never yeah. had to leave someone that I loved that I was in love with. Yeah. Either. Yeah. Did you have kids together? No, we don't have kids together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I loved her family. I loved her mother. Yeah. You know, her mom passed away she was beautiful and Aww. we had so many great you know fun experiences together and mm. you know I, I i just hope she finds what she wants and some peace and stuff you know like, mm. i don't have anything bad to say about her you know i love mm. her i always yep. will love her she's the love of my life there's no replacing her um mm. i believe if she gets some healing too that we'll be able to come together, you know? Yeah. It's, um, sometimes about timing, isn't it? Yeah. Sometimes about timing, about where you are in your own personal development. Cause as a therapist, I deal with a lot of this, you know, and I've, I deal with people who are bereaved, you know, I help people who are separated, getting divorced. And sometimes then it's just about the timing of being in the, in the right space doing the right thing where it can work together. So it's working individually and then together. Yeah. And if, if that's out of balance or it's just, yeah, it's about time, then it's very hard to make that work. And often it doesn't, which is. Well, and, it, and it takes two, you know, one person oh, yeah. doing everything. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's, I, yeah. there's stuff that went on that was just after a while, it's fucking mm. unacceptable to me. Like I, I need, mm -hmm. I have needs and wants, like simple. I don't ask mm. the world of anyone, but like. Mm. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's important. That's why relationships are, um, they're a responsibility as well, because you're depending on each other. You you have to give that part of yourself to that other person. And it's about, that's why it's important to be ready, you know, for, for a relationship. And that's why I think 
people tend to be more ready later in life rather than earlier because when you're younger you're still sort of developing your own well you're trying to understand yourself aren't you you know you're working on who am I what do I need and want and you know meeting your own needs and wants let alone someone else doing that you know so it's uh but yeah it does feel like it's about timing so yeah that feels pretty sad that you're going through that but you're on the flip side and on the other side particularly on the music you've got that that's happening and that's really yeah. happening that's we fantastic just did a couple of videos and we just did a couple of, we did a video yeah. for the queen of everything and letters from the psych ward I'm doing this juice cleanse too. Today's day 12 of this juice cleanse I'm doing because I want to make sure if she sees me that I look better than I ever have in my fucking life, you know? So like, but, um, I mean, yeah. not only that, but I, I need to feel good. I, I you know, I need yeah. to, I need to yeah. feel good about myself and love myself too. Like, you know, cause the, the pain of this marriage and relationship was it almost killed me twice. You know, I can imagine I can imagine. And, you know, a lot of it does stem from early, like I mentioned before, this, uh, if you had this uh, experience of uh, trauma in early childhood, yeah. then all that happens because all relationships are formed from that platform. They're formed from how you related to your parents 
And on that basis, it's how you form attachments and all of this sort of stuff and how you see other people, how you receive other people, how you form bonds or how you don't, you know. And, of course, if none of that was looked at or it was dealt with in other ways, that wouldn't have been repaired. But it's never too late to repair, is it? And I think that's your that's one of your strong messages. I, I remember you saying it isn't oh, too yeah. late. And, and, and yeah. The plant medicines, especially ayahuasca, like yeah. you're able to heal and kind of rearrange some things where mm. um, even the ibogaine, uh, it's called the boga. It's, it's African tribes medicine. Okay. Mm. But the, and then the DMT uh, is very, very powerful medicine. DMT is like, right. it has to be the five MEO DMT. Okay. Uh, there's different yep. kinds. But it has to be five M like mom E O five M E O, and yep. that's a very emotional spiritual thing because look all these places I travel to and with these medicines we already know these places but we don't know that we know them you know mm. like, oh mm. this place, yeah like, you know. Mm. yeah. It feels like this has really impacted your life in a huge way, and this has been a big turnaround for you. Yeah personally and i can't wait to hear i've heard the one beautiful song and it feels i, I absolutely love love the song and the, the single and it just feels very i got the sense of calm i felt calm listening to it and grounded is how i yeah. felt and i i'm guessing that's how you were feeling at the time when you were creating it the queen of everything yeah that's why you know this um marriage was so devastating to lose uh she was mm. a fucking queen and, and I was shown mm. she's in a spiritual world that she's been my queen before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so it's a beautiful song and, and it in is. Honor of our, of our, our love and, um, you know, my feelings about her. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming here and sharing everything, Tony. It's, um, yeah, thank you. Very kind of you, very brave of you. And, um, you know, I wish you the very, very best of luck with everything. I can't wait to see the videos. Wow, I really can't wait. You've do some awesome videos. So the video okay. to this, I want to see definitely. This, so. It's going to be really, really yeah. cool, both of them. Yeah, I flew to Houston to do them. Yeah. Um, my my manager used to be in the band Saliva. Yes, yes, I yeah. know. Yes, yeah. So, um, he was yeah. a drummer, and um, he yeah. plays drums in the video and. Wow. I'd like to get him in the band if he's if he still wants to tour, but I don't think he wants to tour anymore. So <laughs> we'll put the message out. Okay. <laughs> he's one of my favorite people. Yeah. And he's like, you know, I have a couple people in my mm -hmm. life where, you know, my manager, uh, people that work for me, assistants and stuff. Like mm -hmm. I trust I trust these people. Yeah. And, and, and that's a big deal, you it know, is. for me. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and I love them. Like yes. if, if you're in my life and I trust you, I love you and I'm loyal to you forever. Yes. You know, that includes Leon's another one. Like he's my good friend. And yeah. Good. Yeah. That is what I was picking up. And of course, you know, it's all about having that, that experience, you know, and if you haven't had that experience and know that there's been a lack of love and a lack of trust, how are you even going to know how that works with people? How are you going to get there? And it feels like you are, you are getting there slowly getting there and it does take time you know there's been a lot to work through but well done for getting for working through it and for persevering and keep doing what you do great you know keep doing it it's amazing so thank you so much thank you for coming and uh yeah keep in touch okay <laughs> <laughs>